Welcome to the tutorial selecting drawing objects. In this tutorial, we're going to create a dojo for the cartoon karate rabbit that we created in a previous tutorial. For those of you who don't know what a dojo is, it's a training room for those who want to practice karate and martial arts. So I'm going to draw a few rectangular objects in the drawing view, it doesn't matter where. Um, for those of you who like to draw in the camera view, you may have noticed that when you try to make a selection in the camera view, um, drawing elements from different layers in the timeline get selected. So for this tutorial, we only want to be able to select those drawing elements that are on the dojo layer. To do this, you have to go to your preferences on a PC that's under the edit menu, go to the camera tab, and then enable the option select tool works on single drawing, and hit enter to save your change. So now only those drawing elements on the dojo layer are um, not washed out and are selectable. So let's return to the drawing view. So to select the select tool, you can click on its icon in the toolbar, or you can use the keyboard shortcut Option V on Mac or Alt V on Windows. If you have another tool selected, you can also click down, click on just V to momentarily bring up the select tool, and then as soon as you release V, it will go back to the previously selected tool. So let's look at the tools property panel for the select tool. The first option you have is whether you would like your select tool to appear as a marquee or a lasso. The marquee is basically just a bounding box that you can use to select one or more objects in the drawing space. The lasso is more of a free form tool and it allows you to select one or more objects um, in very difficult to reach areas and very precise areas in the drawing space. The next three options we have are the alignment options. These are snapping options. There's snap contour, snap align, and snap to grid. You can use these three all at the same time or in various combinations. Um, I'm going to use them one at a time so that you can see what they do individually. So the first one I mentioned was snap to contour. The way that this works is that if you select one object in your drawing space and drag it down towards another, you'll feel like a weak magnetic pull that's trying to snap the contours of these two objects together. You can view the precision of the snapping by going to the top menu and going to view, show, show strokes, or by using the keyboard shortcut D. So now if we zoom in, you can see that the two contours have snapped together. This also works as if, if you use the contour editor tool. You can actually just take the corner and as you can see there's a blue dot that'll, that lets you know where, where the point is on the contour and sort of creates a magnetic stickiness that snaps to the different contours. The next snap option we have is um, snap align and what this does is aligns one object to different parts of another object. So here you can see that the top of the selected rectangle is aligned with the top of the rectangle directly to its left. Little blue guides appear to let you know what's being aligned um, and where you can drop this object. So I'm going to leave that there. And the last one is snap to grid. Obviously you need the grid turned on to make this useful in any way. And this one goes more or less without saying that if you drag this object around you'll notice that it's automatically being snapped to the different increments on the 12 by 12 field, um, both horizontally and vertically. And like I said, you can use these in combination uh, to build the object that you would like.
So now let's explore a few more options um, of the select tool. If you select an object in the drawing space, you'll notice that in the center of the bounding box there's what we call the pivot point, um, denoted by the P um, beside the cursor. So if you use the select tool to move this pivot point, it temporarily moves the pivot point for one move. For example, if I click off the object and click back onto it, you'll notice it's moved back to the center. This point is actually the center point for rotations that you do, skewing, scaling, resizing, um, all those things, if you're doing them um, using the bounding box and uh, the select tool cursor. However, there are other ways to manipulate um, an object more precisely, and those are using some of the operation buttons here in the tools property panel. Um, the four here in a row are flip horizontal, flip vertical, flip 90 degrees clockwise, and flip 90 degrees counterclockwise. And all of those use the, the pivot point in the center for their center of rotation. Um, these options also exist in the top menu. If you go to Drawing, um, Transform, you'll see that those menus are there. They're grayed out because I accidentally deselected uh, our object here. There are also the operations down here which allow you to change the width of your object or its height um, more precisely by entering in an exact value. You can even lock the two together to um, scale them uniformly. Here you have the option of offsetting your ob object along the x-axis in the second field along the y-axis. The last field is to change the angle. Once again, you can enter a precise value into any of these fields. The last operation is the pencil selection, which allows you to increase or decrease the width of the pencil line. And this really works for any of the central vector lines, uh, line tools, such as all the shape tools, the line tool, the polyline tool, and the pencil. The last thing I'd like to talk to you about are these three operations here. The first being convert pencil line to brush stroke. So if we click on this and then zoom in, and actually I'm going to disable the show strokes option by using the keyboard shortcut D, and then bring up the contour editor. You can see that what was once a pencil line with a central vector now is a brush stroke with um, a vector contour. And as you can see, you can do some really nice things. Um, oh, I think this is because the snap is still on. Uh, to give your, your brush stroke some nice thicks and thins, to give it a bit more of an organic feel uh, than a, a straightforward mechanical line. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't work so well the other way around. If you create a really nice brush stroke with a nice thick to thin taper, then select it, and then go to the drawing menu and choose Convert Brush Strokes to Pencil Lines, you'll notice that you lost all of that nice tapering um, that was in your brush before. So you can't keep that if you go from a contour vector stroke to a central vector line. So if we choose our brush stroke here, we can click on the next um, operation in the Tool Properties panel, which is Smooth. So if we click on this, you'll notice that this line, which is a little bit more, uh, you know, had a bit more of a kink in it, sort of smoothed itself out, and that's what the software does um, with this feature here. And it's a nice feature to have because a lot of people go in by hand with the contour editor to smooth out these curves, and you can have it done automatically for you by clicking on this button. And the last feature, actually, to convert one more line into a brush stroke, which I'll do here, is to flatten lines together. So as you can see, this is a separate object than this object. They're two separate objects. If I select them both and then click on the flatten button here actually, you'll notice that they now become one single object. Um, actually, and one thing that I'm not sure I showed before is that in the brush tool properties panel, um, when you're in the normal brush mode, when you draw two strokes together, 
and you select them, you'll notice they're two separate objects and can be selected separately. Then if you click on the auto flatten button here and draw two more strokes and select them, you'll notice it's a single object. So you can do that as you draw or you can select two objects that are separate go into the select tool property panel and click on the flatten button and now your two strokes are one object. So that's it for selecting drawing objects. Stay tuned for the next tutorial, Erasing Parts of a Drawing.